Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of all that I have learned from Anthony Robbins over the years. I got tricked today. I jumped off the, uh, the bus, caught the train down here to Circular Quay and it was dark and I couldn't work out what was happening and I thought that maybe I'd come a little bit too early but then I realised that daylight savings happened over the weekend and it's the first time that I've been back to the city since the clocks changed and uh, it's a different view it's a different Sydney this morning compared to what it was a week ago so what a beautiful what a magnificent start to another day, a start to a new work week. It's the beginning of October. It's been very hot of late and uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So what I wanna to do today is continue the tradition of Jim's 5am club, where we take OPE, other people's experience and now I'm focusing on Anthony Robbins and using that to create a base, a baseline of learning so that we can build from that and hopefully improve our knowledge, the inventory of OPE that we have. Because you can follow lots of motivational speakers and there are thousands and thousands of books that have been written over the years and on my YouTube channel you'll find over 1,600 blogs where I've taken book summaries and presented them, where I've overlaid them with my own personal experience and views and we take this OPE and use it as a foundation of learning so that we can accelerate, so that we can buy some time where we can learn from others from their mistakes and from their successes so that we too can have a better crack at life rather than waiting for things to happen to be trying to anticipate the patterns, the seasons, the phases and the chapters that invariably will occur within our lifetimes as they do in most people's lifetimes over the history of man. So just getting back to uh, all the things that I've learnt from Anthony Robbins, one of the key messages that uh, is a recurring theme that is absolutely wonderful and so assuring, self-assuring as well, is the uh, point that he makes that we can all change and we can all change in a heartbeat. We can all change after three pips of a horn of a ferry. Change is easy. All you need to do is decide and cut away and the rest is history. So we can change in a heartbeat. We can change any time within our life because we are the authors of our life. We are the conductors of the symphony of our life. And we need to maintain that sovereignty, keep that sovereignty and keep that control for as long as we can. And of course we can't control everything, but what we can control are the things that we can control, but most importantly, the thing that we can mostly control is our attitude and our belief and the way we interpret how things happen in life knowing that life happens for us and it's not something that is here to punish us because at the end of the day we all understand and appreciate that God wants us to live the best life possible to be happy to be fruitful to achieve and to express 
our calling or callings and to understand that things will happen to us we will gain much wealth in different ways some people will gain it in money other will pe people will gain it in experiences other people will gain it in networks and social um, acceptance others will gain it from sport you know sporting accolades you know being like nathan cleary to uh, have a blinder in the grand final and enable his team and his community to enjoy and celebrate a three-peat um, so the reason why we achieve many riches in our lives is not so that we can selfishly indulge and enjoy those things on our own. Humans are social beings. We live in communities. And as Anthony Robbins reminds us, human beings don't do well in uh, isolation. But we need to be with each, with each other uh, because the relationships that we have each other actually define our identity. If you're in the world completely by yourself with nobody else to interact with, um, then your identity would be very, very limited. The fact that we have a mother and a father, uncle, aunt, grandparents, and other people, if we're fortunate, not everybody has those people in their lives, but the mere fact that we have these people in our lives is extremely important. And the reason why it's important is that it gives us an identity. Our identity comes from our relationship to other people. And uh, when a new child comes into a family, the whole family is redefined. The two parents, the husband and wife, the two individuals, they get married and they become a couple. And those two people become parents for the first time. For the first time, they are mother and father. And their parents, if they're still alive, become grandparents. And others, their brothers and sisters, become uncles and aunts. And it goes on and on and on. So everybody gets redefined whenever a first child comes into the world. And that redefinition continues when other children come into the world as well. So it's important to understand and to appreciate and to respect the fact that we are relative to other people. Our our, um, uh, the importance or the purpose of our life is based on how we relate to other people our relative position which gives us purpose which gives us importance which gives us a sense of belonging you know we really need to have that sense of belonging it's just normal it's just part of our human nature to want to belong uh, to a society, to a family, to a cause, to something, to a tribe. So this sense of belonging is very important. But what is most important of all is that once we have all these things, we need to make the most of them whilst we uh, are a part of them and to show gratitude and to be thankful for what we have rather than to be wanting more and more and more and being unsatisfied. My mother used to say that a person who is unsatisfied is never happy. And Anthony Robbins rammed that point home where he says that um, being satisfied being uh, happy, having gratitude, being fulfilled is the rarest thing on the planet. We need to listen to this. This is really, really important. He says, even billionaires who have all the money in the world 
can buy a Ferrari today, a Porsche tomorrow, can have houses in every capital city, can have more money than what you can point a finger at. There are billionaires. You can look around and see the world has lots and lots of billionaires and lots and lots of millionaires. There's lots and lots of people in the world who have lots and lots of money. But Anthony Robbins, who has had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with lots of people who come from very, very wealthy backgrounds, he can attest to the fact just like any priest, any confessor can contest, confess to the, the, um, the account that most people are lonely, most people are unhappy, most people are unsatisfied. So the key to life, if you were to take one point, one learning from Anthony Robbins, the key to life is to be content with what you've got, to show gratitude and to enjoy what you have and to focus on what you've got because where you focus, you're, what you focus on, that's where your energy flows because what you focus on is your reality. And if you're unhappy, if you feel empty, it's because you're comparing yourself to other people and you're not thinking and appreciating and embracing the glory that you have already in your life. The other thing that I loved what about Anthony Robbins said at his recent seminar and it rams home a very important point for all of us. He says that a healthy person can have a thousand dreams but an unhealthy person has all but one dream so there's an invitation to each and every one of us to be grateful for what we have and to work hard to keep what we have I remember watching on television there was an ad, I think it was an insurance company ad or something like that, where you know, people are asked, you know, what they really want in life, you know, what's their, what's their ultimate dream in life. And this lady says, I just want what I've got. I just want what I have, what I currently have. And I just thought about that and it was just a, such a profound message that we have all the things that we absolutely need in our lives right here and now. And yet we're all looking somewhere else to find what we're looking for. And um, I guess it's one of the key messages, the key themes of The Wizard of Oz, where the lion, the, uh, the tin man and the scarecrow were asking for things that they already had and the Wizard of Oz basically just told them you know you, you have it you already have it just express it and uh, it's once again whilst it was a, a story for children there were many many messages there for all the adults to try and learn from so once again let's harp on the point that Anthony Robbins harps on that being satisfied, being content, being fulfilled with your life is a great starting point. I understand that not everybody's life is perfect, but it's pretty good if you sit and focus on the good things that you have rather than all the things you don't have. Because Anthony reminds us that life has many false summits. Things that you achieve and then you look back and say, well, is that all there is? Now you reach a summit and then you look around and you, feel, still, you still feel empty, you still feel lonely. 
like lots and lots of those billionaires that Anthony Robbins refers to. So rather than worry about what we don't have, Anthony Robbins invites us to be happy with all of those things that we have, the parents that we currently have in our lives with all their good health, or even if they're not in good health, I've lost both of my parents and I would give anything just to have one nanosecond with them again. And all I wanna do is hug them, thank them, and simply tell them I love them and to uh, just spend a nanosecond in their presence for one more time. So for those who still have their parents, give them a hug, give them a kiss, tell them that you love them. Look deeply into their eyes and thank them for all that they have done. Because even the worst parent, this is something that I have learned, so I'm just adding it to this and supplementing the message of Anthony Robbins. Even the worst parent is a good parent. They tried their best, given the skills that they had available to them and the resource they had available to them. We can't blame them for what has happened. They brought you into the world. They, uh, they gave you all that they could give you. They had their own challenges. Life isn't easy for anyone. And we need to understand that the gift of life, the gift of coming into the world comes through a portal. And that portal is your parents, your mother, your father, uh, the people who chose to uh, care for you, even if it was just for a little amount of time. But we also have to understand that not all parents have a calling to be good parents. But the fact that they brought you into the world is something that is a gift that you need to acknowledge and respect. And uh, I guess um, you know, be proud of. Because life isn't perfect. None of us are perfect. Life has its ups and downs. And as Marie Forleo says, and, Alan, uh, and Anthony Robbins endorses with all his messages as well, is that we need to try and enjoy progress in life, incremental progress that comes from bold action. And the bolder the action, the more massive the action, the more progress you're going to make. And the progress could be positive progress or negative progress. Anthony Robbins doesn't guarantee that if you take massive action, you're going to get massive, fantastic results. You're going to get a massive something. But then it's up to you to decide, is this what I'm expecting or what I want or what I anticipated? Or is it something that I'm not uh, wanting and then you just change your approach but you still need to continue to invest in the process Anthony Robbins makes a big point about understanding that life is a process we are surrounded by patterns that occur and reoccur time and time again and it's up to us to understand to learn that process and to apply ourselves to that process with action and to know that we're never going to achieve perfection because perfection doesn't exist. It may exist for a moment. It may exist um, in your mind as well. It could be a figment of your imagination. But the reality is, is that the world is constantly changing we are constantly changing. Everything around us is constantly changing. The relationships that we enjoy are constantly changing. And we need to change ourselves in order to keep up because tomorrow's or today's eights are going to be tomorrow's sixes. 
and we need to keep on working in order to maintain the status quo let alone improve the status quo so you know, we can't just rest on our laurels we can't just kick back and say my life is perfect now I can sit back I can retire I can do nothing because with that attitude you're going to have you're going to guarantee that you're going to have significant issues for today and into the future. Anthony Robbins also reminds us that you know, we have behaviours which are both good and bad and we need to be our own psychologists. We need to understand what triggers the good behaviours and what triggers the bad behaviours and try and manage those uh, things a little bit better whenever we can. And when we've got bad behaviours, bad habits that infect us, Anthony Robbins says that we need to somehow scramble the things that trigger you, the things that cause us to have that bad behaviour and not to spend too much time suffering but to spend more time trying to fix things where possible and on the topic of suffering I think I've mentioned a few times before but my late auntie Angela had a, a disease called scleroderma where her skin dried out and wherever there were knuckles and bones it would cause a lesion which would be excruciating, excruciatingly painful but what I learned from her she was a woman of faith a, a Christian a person who hardly ever missed church she loved Jesus she loved um, her family she read the scriptures and even though she went through a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort, I remember learning from her that suffering is optional because suffering is your response to the stimulus that you're experiencing. And if you can give a productive, empowering meaning to that pain and discomfort, then it's going to change the experience that you're going to have it's going to make it better and it's going to give it purpose um, if you understand what I mean and Anthony Robbins talks about the fact that we have flavours of suffering and we all have different flavours of suffering and we need to understand what causes us to suffer what causes us to interpret things that are happening in our lives in a negative way that causes um, immense um, discomfort for some people they suffer their whole lives over something that happened once upon a time in their lives and is no longer relevant is no longer or should not, no longer have a hold on them but then go through a whole life uh, remembering the pain of something that happened when they were young so what Anthony Robbins suggests to us is that we need to identify the patterns that we have in our lives that are productive and the patterns which are non-productive the things that we do that are good and the things that are not too good and we need to be able to get rid of the things that disempower us that make us unhappy where possible and to replace them with new patterns but the important thing to learn and this is really really key that you can't displace a pattern without having a, another pattern to replace it with so you can't just stop smoking and do nothing else 
what we need to do is we need to stop something we need to displace it with something else and that something else needs to be conditioned and um, and, um, and and sorted out so what Anthony Robbins asks us to do is to catch ourselves doing the things or responding in a way which is not productive and then snapping out of it and he uses a thing called a 90 second rule where he says it's okay to be unproductive and silly and respond negatively to certain stimuli that are happening in your life but he says you can only give yourself 90 seconds just give yourself 90 seconds and then snap out of it and you need to do a radical change in your body or your focus in order to snap out of it so um, once again it's a call to action it's a trick that you can use but once you identify yourself doing something which you want to change like biting your nails or you know being jealous of somebody else or whatever it may be when you catch yourself doing it you need to do something to radically change your body and your focus and this is called the 90 second rule and another thing that Anthony Robbins goes on to talk about is the fact that we have many many fears which are irrational in our lives and most fears uh, influence our core beliefs and the three core fears that Anthony Robbins talks about is having less of, uh, losing something, or something never coming your way. And those fears, according to Anthony Robbins, tend to be overwhelming and cause people to uh, go into their fight, flight, or freeze responses. And uh, it causes suffering because you're worrying about losing something you're worrying about having less of something or you're worried that something will never come your way and the more you fear that the more you believe that then as Anthony Robbins says you're you're creating a self-fulfilling prophecy because where your focus goes your energy flows and if you're loading up your reticular activating system with these things that you're worrying about losing, you're worrying about having less of, or you're worrying about never getting, then your brain will receive that, will manifest that. It will search the universe to prove that what you're fearing is right and you're going to continue to lose and suffer. And another really, really important breakthrough point that we got from this UPW weekend and also reading Anthony Robbins' material is that you only suffer in life when you focus on yourself. The only time you suffer is when your ego is engaged and you're selfish as opposed to selfless. Because if you're giving, if you're a person who's detached and just do things because you love doing things without expecting anything in return, and that's what love is. Love is an act of sacrifice and an act of giving up of yourself for the betterment of somebody else. And uh, in the book, The Road Less Travelled, Scott Peck, the author, talks about this it says that love is a sacrifice giving up of yourself and not expecting anything in return and you now just the basic christian principle is that jesus gave his life up 
for everybody's sins. And he's not expecting anything in return other than for people to love him, to love God with all their heart, mind and soul and to do what he did, to love one another as he loved himself. So we need to understand that if you're suffering, if I'm suffering, if you see people around you suffering, the only reason why they're suffering is because they are focused on themselves and not focused on others. It's the ego expressing itself. So in order to grow and develop, um, you need to be growing and developing for the purpose of serving others, of being the servant of your corporation, by being the servant of your family, the, by being the servant of your community. But uh, the big problems that we have, and Anthony Robbins harps on this as well, is the mind, the human brain, is binary. It's on or off. It just thinks in dualities. Good, bad, yes, no, high, low, uh, win, lose. And because it thinks like that or it operates like that, it causes people, I guess, grief. It causes them to think that they are losing when they're actually not losing. They're getting less of something when they're not actually getting less of it. And they fear that they're never going to get it when they've already got it. But uh, the reason why our brains work like that is that it was designed like that. The brain was designed like that in order to help us survive and get through life, especially in the days when there were significant threats. But if you want to destroy suffering, if you want to find one method of improving your life beyond your wildest dreams. Anthony Robbins says that gratitude destroys suffering. And expectation, on the other hand, kills joy. So if you're expecting things, or if, you're, if you feel entitled to something, and you think that it's gonna come your way and it has to come your way, because of your birthright, then this expectation is going to wire you for pain. If you want to live a fantastic life, if you want to help your children live a fantastic life, then the basis of a fantastic life is to be thankful for what you have. And I guess from a Christian perspective, the Sunday liturgies that we have, the Eucharist. The word Eucharist is a Greek word which means thank you. You know, where we come together one day a week on our rest day and we thank Jesus. We thank the God man for everything that we have in our lives. And uh, we pray that everybody is happy, healthy, and, um, and the world is a better place. So one key learning from Anthony Robbins is that we need gratitude and we need to try and eliminate expectation. We need to try and eliminate this sense that we are entitled to all of these things in the world. And we need to trade expectation for appreciation, to be thankful for what we currently have, all the things that we currently have, and all the things that we've had in our lives. And for those people who look back over their lives and just are focused on something, a bad sort of occurrence that happened, now you can change your life at any point in time, you can change your life in a heartbeat, you can relive your life, you can refocus your life and rather focusing on those things that caused your pain uh, momentarily 
and that you've hanged on to that and it just keeps on reverberating throughout everything you see and everything you do in your life. What Anthony Robbins says is that we need to change the way we see our lives and you can change the past, you can change the present. Instead of looking at the opera house, I can look at Circular Quay. I can choose to look at the activity over there. You can change what has happened by refocusing and, um, and reformatting what has happened. Because most people, in fact all people, have had a great life. There have been more great things that have happened in a person's life than things that are not all that great. But guess what? We tend to focus on the things that are not great. I was interested to find out the other day, and Anthony Robbins talks about this as well a lot, in terms of pain and pleasure. And he says that more people will do more to avoid, avoid pain than to gain pleasure. And the reason why this happens is it gets back to our survival mode that our primitive brain is primarily focused on survival and survival needs you to do things in order to eliminate the risks and to make sure that you're not uh, caught or compromised in any way, shape or form. So the primitive brain is very risk averse and people will do more, as we say, to avoid pain rather than to gain pleasure. And I've also learnt as well that in our lives, when you have a painful experience, or when you have a painful thought, or when you have a fear, it doesn't matter how irrational that fear is, but in order to neutralise that negativity, you need 10, not one, but 10 positive inputs in order to neutralize one negative thought. So just think about it. Many of the thoughts, in fact, in fact, most of the thoughts that infect us on a daily basis are negative thoughts. But we need to understand that in order to neutralize and to oppose those negative thoughts, we need 10 positive good thoughts to come into our head that in itself, mathematically, is a significant challenge, especially when we've got social media, especially when we've got news, especially when we've got negative friends, negative work peers, people who focus on the bad things in life, because they're just going to be echoing, magnifying, amplifying, all the negative things even if those negative things are as we say time and time again irrational and for 99 percent of the time they won't materialize in our lives unless of course we focus on them remembering how the reticular activating system works if you focus on it even if it's remote even if it's a remote possibility if that's all you focus on and that's all you expect, then that's what you're going to manifest in your life and make real, because it's going to be real for you. Even though there's evidence to the contrary, it's going to be real for you because you have manifested, you have made it real. So once again, a call for action is to trade expectation for appreciation and your whole life will change in a moment. You need to focus on what is rather than what isn't. And to understand that there's a thing called negative stacking. And as we said before, we live in a world that has social media, has instant communication, that has lots and lots of communication. And what we tend to find, but we can't quite rationalize in our mind, is that we're in a world that is negatively stacked 
all the time, the news negatively stacks, and the brain can't weight things. The brain can't tell the difference between something that is vividly imagined and something that is real, and it can't build a weighting system. It can't weight uh, the different news items and the different stimuli that we get. It weights them all exactly the same. So if you get five small things that trigger you, uh, those five things will turn into a tsunami or what feels or appears to be a tsunami in your life when actual fact they could be five light weight things that are made to feel as if they are heavyweight. Now you need to be able to get perspective and put perspective on things and sit back and rationalize and use your brain rather than your emotions to consider what impact certain things are having to you. So this negative stacking we've got to be aware of. Um, it's negative stacking, it's ne negative priming and for every negative stack you need a significant positive stack of 10 or more, a 10x positive stack to eliminate and to neutralize a single negative um, input. So um, I guess what we'll do is we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode of all that I've learned from Anthony Robbins over the years. I think I've told you in the previous vlogs that I went to two UPWs back in the mid 90s, 94 and 95, Anthony Robbins second and third UPW in Sydney that he hosted in Sydney. And it was a magnificent event back then, not quite as big and as energetic as the one that we had here in Sydney recently, where we had 9,000 people from all over the world, from 69 different countries here, um, being part of a collective euphoria. So uh, we need to keep on going, we need to keep on reading, we need to keep on growing and developing, and uh, stick with me, because I will come to you again from a different place with a different message of empowerment, where I share with you all the things that I have learned from Anthony Robbins over the years. Take care, have a good day, and wishing you all the very best. Yes, us, and bye for now.